Hey guys, um, back with another update. I wanted to show you real quick before I, as I talk, my new house. This is it right here. Let's do a quick little tour for you so you can see it. We're renovating right now, so there's a lot of work. But yeah, there's a lot to do here. We're putting up some of this stuff. Uh, and then here's, it goes back in there. Here's the kitchen. But anyways, just wanted to show you guys that. Um, some incredible things are happening in the realm of disciple making. Uh, I wanted to share just one quick story right off the bat. So that uh, this has kind of been a continuing story, but um, with a guy named Corral, uh, who uh, our team met at the hookah bar, they've been doing uh, discovery Bible studies for the past uh, six weeks now. Um, and some amazing things have happened just by sitting down and reading the Bible together. Uh, this guy's a, a Hindu and he has started to talk to Jesus and Jesus has started telling him all sorts of things. Uh, one of the one of the cool stories I think about this was uh, he felt like Jesus wanted him to quit smoking tobacco and, and drinking. And so he was gonna do that, but I think he, you know, he, he was like, nah, I'm not gonna do this. And he uh, went to the vape store, got a vape and the vape he bought didn't work. So this is as Jesus has been telling him to quit this stuff. The vape didn't work, so he took it back in there. He knows the guy. He's like, hey, this doesn't work. He got another one. This time the vape didn't work either. <laughs> and so he's like, oh my gosh. So he left that alone. And then I think he went back to his house. And there was a guy that wanted uh, a cigarette. Um, and he got out of his pack of cigarettes to try to give him a cigarette. And he dropped all of them in a mud puddle. Uh, so it's just kind of like, this divine thing that's happening, uh, preventing him from getting any tobacco. And then he was, uh, his mom, I think, was getting him a, a drink of alcohol, and she dropped the entire bottle, spilt the very expensive entire bottle of alcohol on the ground. Um, and so Corral, he's, it's been an um, amazing, amazing story of him just learning who Jesus is. Um, and we, we're, uh, you know, they were talking the other day, and he said he wants to be baptized. Um, so this is just, you know, I think one of the incredible stories of how um, just journeying with someone slowly and letting the Jesus to, you know, reveal himself to people over time, how that works. And the funny thing is we didn't even use the, the New Testament. Um, none of our team actually studied the New Testament with him. It was just the Old Testament. And Jesus just began to reveal himself as they read the word together. Uh, so just a really cool story. Um, on my end of things, I am uh, spending a lot of time with unbelievers and reaching out to uh, just just trying to befriend people in the community. So I've, I've you know, like I told you, I've you know joined the Ultimate Frisbee League. Um, I've I've been hanging out with the assistant gym manager uh, at my gym, um, and it's been going very very well. These guys are very spiritually open, and uh, this is a, a big prayer request um, for these guys because these guys have a pretty good amount of influence over some friends um it was just that they would they would want to do a discovery study with me and it would become a, a group that we would we would just be able to kind of like corral just go on this journey together and that they would be committed to that um uh, that's a huge huge prayer request uh, and, and really our, our whole team is uh, has really been buckling down on we're, we're going to spend most of our time with the lost uh because we want to be discipling the lost we want to be engaged in the community we want to be loving people we want to be spending time with people uh and so it's been a, a really cool season i think it, it's been like a, a lot of shifting a little bit of just getting back on our on our focus because man when you're in this thing it, it can be so easy to just spend all your time in, in meeting after meeting and planning after planning and not really being out there you know with people which is you know what we should be doing um, and so we're just kind of refocusing, number one, on prayer. Uh, prayer is much more a priority. Um, and we are we're getting back. I mean, we're talking, we're getting up at like, you know, 5 and 6.30 a.m. and meeting together and praying um, for hours and, and meeting up and, you know, praying for these people that we're working with. Uh, and so it's, um, it's really just a beautiful thing uh, to be a part of. And uh, just wanted to update you guys on that and please be praying specifically for Sam uh, Please be praying for Anthony and please be praying for Cole. These are three of the guys that I'm particularly working with 
Um, on the other side of coins with uh, believers, I'm currently discipling four uh, teenagers who are just so on fire for Jesus right now. Uh, their names are Josiah, Mayan, uh, Phoebe, and Harrison. And they are they are so awesome. They have so much influence over their friends as well. So um, it's really awesome what's happening with them. And then also I've got the, the youth group, uh, you know, kind of the younger guys, elementary school age that I'm discipling as well. So uh, a lot of things in the works here. Please be praying for these things and, and please be praying for um, me with his house because... Uh, <laughs> It's a lot of work fixing this thing up and it's also got this little tiny home on it. If anybody needs a place to stay or a getaway, let me know. We've got all this beautiful land back here as well. So if you need a nature retreat, I got you. Blessings to you all. I love you all. Thank you for praying. Thank you for your financial support. Without you, I cannot make disciples and you give me the time to be able to do this. So thank you so much. May God bless you. Amen.